Okay, so I got a lot of emails about uh, our homework problem and how you calculate all the things that I've asked you to calculate. Okay, and that's great. That's perfectly fair. Uh, don't feel bad about you know any of this stuff uh, at all. It's a tricky question. Okay, and so what I want to do uh, is is make this video and walk you through how to solve the first one. Right. So this is going to be the answer to question one. Okay, which we've gone over a couple times in class, uh, and then I'm going to ask you to apply all of this to uh, question two, which is the same setup, but I changed the discount rate to 25% instead of 10. Okay? Uh, to be clear, both of those discount rates are absurdly high, uh, but that's okay. We, uh, we can take some new ways uh, here. Um, I also want to explain this picture a little bit, um, and what I want to do is, is explain it in a different way. Okay, so like show you where this picture comes from and see like how this all works. So what this picture really is, is it's two uh, separate uh, marginal net benefit curves, which we just call M and B uh, curves. Okay, and so like we know the marginal net benefit. So the marginal net benefit would be the net benefit of each additional unit. Okay, so to calculate that, all we're going to do is take the marginal benefit, which is given by the demand curve, and subtract the marginal cost, okay, which is given by the supply curve. Okay, and so if you do that math, right, you end up with what we refer to as the marginal net benefit. So in this case, uh, 20 minus uh, one half uh, QT minus the four, right, that is equal to 16 minus uh, 0 0.5 QT. Okay, so, so far so good, okay? And what that gives us is a curve uh, that's gonna look like this, okay? And it's gonna have a downward slope because we have a negative sign here. The y-intercept, or in this case, I guess the p-intercept, uh, is going to be 16, right? And we can verify that by plugging in zero for qt, right? So this is q, right? Uh, we plug in zero here, right? And we're left with 16. The x-intercept, or the q-intercept, if you want to be persnickety, uh, this is going to be 32, right? And the way I'm figuring that out is I'm setting this equal to 0, and I'm solving for qt, okay? And so 16 minus 1 half times 32, right? That is going to be equal to 16 minus 16, which is 0, okay? Now, this marginal net benefit curve is the exact same for both time periods, t1 and t2. So we'll just abbreviate this one. Uh, T1, okay? Now, in T2, right, we would have the exact same thing. We would have uh, 16 and 32, okay? And we'll call this T2, right, just to label it, okay? But we have to discount the future because what we're trying to do is think about what is most efficient for us to do today in light of the fact that the future is going to come. Okay, and so what we do is we're going to discount this by 10%. Okay, so what do we discount? Well, we're not going to discount quantity, right? We're not going to discount the quantity because it's not like 10% less stuff is going to exist just because it's the future. That doesn't make sense. Okay, things will like there will be less in the future because we use stuff today, but it's not because the future is like in the future that's causing there to be less stuff. What we're going to do instead is we're going to discount the marginal net benefit of each future unit, right, of each unit that we use in the future in order to calculate the net present value. Okay, and so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do 16, which is the value right here, right, of the zeroth unit. We're going to divide that by 1 plus the interest rate R, okay, which is 0 0.1, and that is equal to 16 over 1.1, which is equal to uh, 14.54 uh, repeating, okay? And so what this does is it rotates the, uh, the marginal net benefit curve in T2 down by the discount rate, right? It just simply does that, okay? And so this becomes 14.54, okay? So far, so good, okay? Now to get from these pictures onto this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this one, right? So I'm just going to flip these axes and I'm going to put it right here. So what I could do 
is I could replace this with my dashed line. Okay, and that's all I've done, right? That's all we've done here is we've taken this curve right here, which we understand in its in familiar you know orientation, and I just flipped it, you know, so that the axis is over here and the intercept, the x-intercept would be over here. Okay, now where do I get the eight from here? Right. Well, that would be 32 units away from 40. Right. I'm moving. So, so if this is zero and I'm going to 32, right? Well, this is the zero on this axis. And I'm going to 32, but that corresponds with 40 and eight. Right. So that gives us our uh, x-intercept or q-intercept. Sorry, I'm probably going to keep flipping that around, but whatever. Okay. And so that gives us our x-intercept here. Okay, and then from this, right, what we can then do is calculate the slope, right? So the slope of this line is going to be the change in, I'm just going to use x and y, sorry, the change in y divided by the change in x. Okay, so um, y from here to here is going up by 14, right? So this is a positive uh, 14 and a half, right? Uh, 5, 4. Okay, and then I'm going to divide that by the change in x. So I'm going from 8 to 40, right? This is uh, 40. So the change there is a positive 32. Okay, and let's just uh, do that math real fast. Uh, that divided by 32. Okay, and that gives me a slope of 0 0.45. Uh, repeating, but we're going to chop it off at 0 0.45 because uh, that's going to be you know good enough for our purposes. Okay, so we got the slope. All right, the next thing I want to do uh, is use the point-slope form of a, a line. And so what that equation is, it's y minus y1 is equal to m, the slope, times x minus x1. Okay, uh, I'm going to make this really easy, and I'm going to pick a point uh, that has a y coordinate of zero. So I know like this point here and I know this point here. Um, okay, so sorry, I got a voicemail. Uh, I'm gonna pick the one that has a y coordinate of zero so I can just have y equals on this side. So I have y is equal to uh, 0 0.45 times x minus eight, right? Okay, and so there's your equation for your line. All right, we can sub in, you know, P's and Q's to make this uh, economics, right, instead of just algebra. Uh, so it'd be P and uh, Q. Okay, and now if I want to find this intersection, I've got the equation of the line uh, for the upward sloping one. I've got the equation for the downward sloping one. And all you got to do is set those equal, solve for P and Q, you'll find uh, Q which is the only one we're really concerned about, All right? That is going to be equal to 20.57 approximately. That is how many units you use in T1, right? And that is all, and then 40 minus that number would be how many you would use in T2, okay? Now, what we're really doing here, right? What we're really doing when we solve for these equations is we're actually setting the marginal net benefit of T1 equal to the marginal net benefit of T2, right? That's all we're actually doing, because what we get is, you know, whatever this number is here. I should have looked at it or figured it out. All right, we'll just call that X, okay? Uh, whatever it is, right, we'll solve for that, okay? And so what we're doing there is we're setting the marginal net benefits across time equal to uh, one another. And this is just another instantiation of the equal marginal principle. Right, the idea that you continue to produce or continue to consume until the marginal net benefit is equal to the marginal net benefit of whatever your other your alternative is, your opportunity cost. Okay, so here, using a resource in the present comes at the opportunity cost of using it in T2. Okay, and so what we want to do is set those marginal net benefits equal to one another. Now you could do that right uh, on these graphs alone. You don't have to flip them. Uh, it's way faster to do it this way, uh, but there's nothing in principle stopping you from, you know, checking a whole bunch of marginal net benefits 
all over the place and solving you know that way you just got to make sure that you are keeping in mind that q1 plus q2 has to equal 40. okay uh, the much faster way like i said uh, is just to take this t2 and flip it okay uh, so that will give you uh, the answer for a um, this would be the answer for part c okay and so what we need to do um, is then solve for the total benefits uh, from T1 and T2 in net present value terms. Okay, so we can do that. That's no big deal. Uh, so whenever we want to calculate the uh, total benefits, right, the total net benefits, I guess you could say, what we're looking at, so I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw a uh, uh, T1, just for simplicity's sake, since they're whole numbers. What we're doing, right, recall that this marginal net benefit, right, what it is, is each additional unit has some marginal net benefit. And so the area under the curve would represent the total benefit, okay? And so uh, what we want to do is figure out uh, how much area is under the relevant portions of the curve. Now, if you are, so we can, we'll do it the slow way first, and then I'll show you kind of a trick that works if you uh, kind of understand what's going on here. Okay, so uh, I'll do it the slow way. Okay, so what we need, right, we're, now we're gonna go up to uh, 20.57, right, that's our uh, stopping point for, uh, excuse me, T1. Okay, uh, so we're gonna stop there. So what I need is the area of this shape here, okay? Now, uh, to calculate that, it's probably easiest to calculate the area of this whole triangle, and then I'm gonna subtract the area of this little triangle, all right? So remember the area of a triangle is one half base times height, okay? So one half times uh, the base, zero to 32, right? So 32, and the height is to 16, all right? And that's just equal to whatever 16 squared is. Uh, so let's figure out what that is. 256. I actually should have known that. That's an easy one. Uh, 256. Okay, so that's that whole area. Now what I need is the area of this, right? Again, one half base times height. So one half uh, the base, right, is going to be 32 minus 20.57, right? That's this distance right here, and the height is going to be um, 16 minus uh, one half times 20.57. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do that math. It's going to take me too long to figure it out. Uh, it's not going to take long. I just have to plug it into the calculator. Uh, but that would be how you'd set it up, right? So that would be this area. Okay, so then you would do uh, 256 minus, you know, whatever. Uh, I'll just set this equal to, let's call it Y. 256 minus Y, right? That would be the total uh, benefit in uh, T1. Okay, now what we got to do is figure out the area of this, the, the future, right? Uh, so what we want there is... Uh, yeah, what we want there is kind of the same thing, right? Instead of uh, having our, our triangle look like that, right? We're going to have 14, whoops, not 15, 14.54, uh, and this is still 32, right? I've just redrawn that blue line, but I flipped it back over. And we know here that we're going to go to uh, 19.54. Four, three. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so here, uh, what we would do is the area of, we want this area right here. Okay, so same setup, right? We would do one half of 14.54 times 19.43. Uh, okay, that would be, uh, I'm sorry, not that, uh, times 32. Right, that would be this whole giant triangle right here. Uh, and then what I want to do is subtract, so minus one half 
uh, the base here is whatever uh, 32 minus 19.43 and then the height right well that's going to be um, 14.54 minus one half times 19.43 right and there you go you get some other number uh, which we call that z right just because again i'm not going to solve this for you uh, and then the total benefit would just be whatever y is plus z okay. and then you'd be done okay uh, so that's one way that's the the like intuitive way uh, there's a clever way to do it so if you notice on our graph uh, what we're doing on this this two-sided graph for the first period we are finding this area right here and then for the second period we are finding this area uh, right here Uh, and so what you can do if you want to be uh, really clever, right, is find the area of this triangle here, the area of this triangle here, and then subtract the area of this uh, triangle right here because you've double counted it, right? That would be the really clever way to do this. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it the way we just did here. Um, but this method of subtracting this triangle right here, then you'll have to calculate three areas of triangles instead of four. Right? So, you know, it saves you a little bit of algebra. Uh, but the first way I did it, I uh, would probably get you uh, a little more insight uh, and it'd be much more universally applicable. Okay? Uh, so that is how you solve uh, parts A, B, and C. Okay, so remember the trick, right, is to calculate what this number here is in T2, and the trick is to take uh, this 16 and divide it by 1 plus R, okay? So I'll give you the hint for uh, number 2, right? So number 1, right, so for number 1, we did 16 over 1.1. For number 2, you're going to do 16 divided by 1 plus 0 0.25, right, which is uh, 16 over 1.25 and this was equal to 14.54. Uh, and 16 divided by one and a quarter. I feel like I should be able to do that math in my head, but for some reason my brain's not working. Not enough coffee. 12.8. Uh, okay. So what you would do here is the exact same thing, except instead of having 14.54, you'd have 12.8. Okay. And that'll be it. That's how you solve it. Okay. And really what's happening as discount rates increase, just to kind of give you uh, the picture, all right? So you know, remember, uh, so, 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 <clears throat> when we did uh, T1, right, we had 16 and 32, right? And then when we applied a discount rate, all we did is we rotated it, right? So it became uh, with 10%, 14.54. Right, still terminating at 32. When you have a higher discount rate, look nice, this is a 10%, right? And with a 25% discount rate, which means you are valuing the future less, right? Uh, you have 12.8. Obviously, this is not to scale, you know, sue me, okay? Uh, so this would be a 25% discount rate. So a higher discount rate, all it does put together my markers to make a line, right? All a higher discount rate does is cause this line to rotate down, right? And whatever, right? And if it went even further, or uh, even higher, this line would rotate down even further, okay? So this should give you uh, some clues into how to solve question two. Uh, is it a boatload of math? Yes. Okay, there's no denying that, uh, but you're economic students, so math should be uh, mildly, you should be mildly comfortable with math, at least algebra, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, send me a text, whatever you gotta do, uh, and we will work it out together. Cool? Right, and that only took 20 minutes, so uh, you should be good. Uh, let me know if you have questions.